today on Divorce Court. When I first met Derek, he was the sweetest man I ever met in my life. Now it's like he's just not the same man that I fell in love with at all. I came on Divorce Court because me and my wife's relationship isn't working and we can't really get along. I feel like Derek has definitely checked out of our relationship. She just feel like she just automatically come home and just be glued to her and come and cuddle and all that. I ain't really feeling that. I felt like I had a glimmer of hope, but he's been showing me a different side of him that I just do not like. I'm ready for this marriage to be over so I can move on with my life. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tiara Brown and Derek Brown, Mr. and Mrs. Brown. You have been together for five years, married for four of those five years, and you are now here because you do not want to be married anymore. Mrs. Brown, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here today? I'm just entirely fed up with my husband. He just, um, for the past five years, and we have two kids together in these five years and got married in four, but we got married so young and we fell in love very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like he wasn't there for me emotionally. Okay. I understand in the beginning, while you were dating, you initially got pregnant while you were dating and you got married because you got pregnant. Is that right? No. <clears throat> what happened was when we fell, we fell in love very quickly and we, Got, we found out we were pregnant about like six or seven months into the relationship. And I'm not going to say it wasn't planned because we weren't doing anything to not have a baby. Is that true? Yeah. So we um, got pregnant and then we... I, I was very excited and I felt like he was mutually excited with me, but I guess it just didn't play out that way once I had my miscarriage. It's like he wasn't there emotionally for me. Like, of course, we were in different states because I was in Tennessee and he was in Georgia. We were on the phone a lot, but he just really wasn't there. Like, I would text him every day to tell him about what's the growth of the baby and all of these different things, and he just... How old were the two of you then? Um, he was... 18 and I was 20, oh, 21. I, that's why. I'm gonna tell you that right there. That's why, because he was 18. Yeah. And 18 year old boys, and I'm gonna say that because I've had six sons. Uh, and that's no, that's no hint on him, but they're just not that. Well, he's still an 18, I mean, a 23 year old boy. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Stand up, Mr. Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown, oh, let me ask you God, this man. question 18 or not? Didn't it alarm you that you were having unprotected sex and you might get caught having a baby before, before you were ready? I was aware of that. I said, were you alarmed? Oh, yeah. It's two different things. For, uh, someone get him some uh, Kleenex and take the gum out of his mouth. Thank you. Were you concerned about that at all? Was there any thought that went into that? Of course it was. I mean... No, it wasn't. I'm not talking to you, Mrs. Brown. I'm talking to Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, were you concerned at all about the possibility of conceiving a child when you were just dating somebody for a few months? Well, now, now that I think about it, I wasn't mentally prepared for a child. And she, she said that I wasn't there for her. I took her to the emergency room when she had when the miscarriage began, so I don't see how I wasn't there for her. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you take her and drop her off, or did you stay? We sat there and we talked the whole time. Yeah, the time. thing is, Stop. no, he if was not there. you don't, in, yeah, uh -uh. I know you're hurt, I know this is hard, but I gotta talk to you one at a time. Were you physically there or emotionally there as well? In the beginning, when she first, she was here visiting me, I was living here and she came from Memphis to visit. She had the miscarriage while she was here visiting me. Okay. So when she, you know, we was, when the miscarriage started, we rushed to the hospital. We was right. there the whole time. That's when we was told that the miscarriage, you know, she was having a miscarriage. Right. So that's when she had a family member come get her and take her back home. Now, I wasn't there for the DNC because I'm just starting a new job. I just moved here. So, but I, we talked every day about, you know, everything. Now, she, I wasn't as emotional as she was because, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not her, so I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't. You weren't actually pregnant. Going through the... And the emotional yeah. and the physiological changes that happen to a woman while she's miscarrying are dramatic so and I don't, huge. I don't, you know, I can't yeah. say I know how she felt. I know I, I, I got understand it. I, I hurt, but, you know. I, I understand. 
what ways do you feel he wasn't there? Even when I would sit, li literally be crying in his face, and he was like, what are you crying for? Like, what, what do you want me to do? Were you dismissive? No. She yes, he was. He was playing his video game. That's what he was doing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Were you That's dismissive? Did you ask what you're crying for, all that? Your Honor, we'll be, let's just say, we'll be eating. And she just start crying out of nowhere. And I'm like, okay, what's wrong now? Then she's like, this is probably like a year later. And she can be crying about it. You know, I'm not saying she, she's wrong for expressing her feelings. But it's never, I would never just be like, oh, what now? Why, you know? No, that's not true. I was not being like that towards her. You say he can't talk about how he feels. That yeah. you feel that he has no empathy and no emotion. Tell himself. me why you feel that way. And give he me some examples. He doesn't know how to express himself. Like, I feel like I can sit up here and tell him, like, express my whole emotion to him completely. Mm -hmm. But I know it was a particular time where we we're going through something at this time, and his friend wanted to go out to the nightclub. And it was a particular woman that was dancing around, trying to get his attention, basically. But I felt like when she would come near him, he would pretend like he didn't see it and, like, allow the woman to, like, brush up against him. So we decided to all leave the, club, the nightclub. And I looked, bl glanced back over, the woman is dancing on him. And when he looks over at me and sees me look at him, then he walks away and tries to give some guy a high five, like, oh, <laughs> whoa, uh, I'll see you later. Okay. Were you dancing inappropriately with her or no? I'm the type of guy, you know, if I feel like I'm getting bored, you know, I'm going to try to bring life to the party. I'm going to be like, okay, let's go. So I just get up and start dancing to the songs, you know, having the DJ play certain music that can get me turned up to, you know? Yeah, I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I don't think it was a big incident either. I don't think it's a big incident. I want to turn the tables now to talk about something else. I understand that you no longer share a bed together, and I want to know why. She decided, well, I'm going to come back. It was like... That's not true. Can I speak? No, because it's not true. No, Ms. Brown, don't tell him what he can do in my courtroom. I tell you what to do. I'm not sitting on the couch. We made that agreement that we... That was before you decided to come back. The, I never said I was leaving, Derek. Whatever. Tell me when I ever said I was leaving. I got proof. Show me when I said I was leaving. Derek, please, like, we really need to talk because it no, literally... No, no, because you, you said, you, what I do to you? I don't want to talk to you at all. Tell me what I did to you. This your presence. I don't want to be around you. You heard him, right? That, that hurt what me did he entirely. Say? He said my presence was bothering him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That hurt me deeply. And after, the reason why the video ended is because I just walked away, because I just didn't even want to fight anymore. I literally went in our children's room and I just went to sleep. Had you been fighting pre before that? No, this that? was because the thing is, we've been broken up for the past four weeks, and I went to um, Tennessee to visit family just to clear my head because he had been being a, a very big <laughs> to me the, the whole first two weeks of us breaking up. So you just came back after the four Yeah, and I literally break. was only there for three days, and he was upset that I left. He was so entirely pissed off that I left. Why was I upset you left for? He was, le he was mad because I left, because before I left, he was like, oh, we should get back together, but I felt like he was only saying that because he didn't want me to go. Okay. And I was like, don't try to tell me mm -hmm. to not go for that, for, in you know... I, I got you. I got you. Mr. Brown, what is, you, what is your contention about how that occurred? That video? Yeah. <laughs> we was or just arguing. how you led up to that. We was arguing before that she started recording. And she wanted me to go on the couch. And since she came back, you know, she decided, she told, I gave her ultimatum. I was like, well, I feel like you shouldn't leave to go to Memphis. And she decided, I'm going to go back to Memphis. I'm like, okay, well, if I you didn't leave, say that. Yeah. Stop. If you leave, you know, she was like an hour out. And I text, I said, well, I feel you shouldn't leave. You know, it's the beginning of the month. We got a lot of bills due. We really can't afford for you to take off work. And miss a whole week. She was decided she was gonna stay a whole week. I like so I like um, she like well I'm gone. I like well check this out. If you leave, I'm gonna put a 30 day notice in. I'm gonna go live with a family member. Yeah, just to get Stop. back at me. <laughs> so she like well I'm just gonna stay in Memphis. I'm like okay. Right. So by that time you like I'm pretty much over it. Then she decided well I'm gonna come back. It was like that's a, not true. Can I speak? No, because it's not true. No, Miss Brown, don't tell me tell him what he can do in my courtroom. I tell you what to do. Now, I gave you a full opportunity to, to speak. He needs his, and if I need to come back to you, I will. But if you keep interrupting him, you come off as the person who can't control themselves as opposed... Do you know what I mean? You come off crazy. Don't come off crazy. Tell me about you telling him about the guy at church. 
One night I went to Bible study and there was a particular gentleman there. And I feel like when I, like literally our whole five years that we've been together, I have never caught an eye for any man. But we was literally broken up and I was like, wow. I, like once I looked at this man, the thrive that he had, everything about him, the way that he walked, everything, it just made me feel like I could, you know, move on away from him. Because I just felt like, how can I sit here and still be heartbroken and beating up over all the things that you keep putting me through? And I just still sit there and cry over it. Yeah. And I but finally did you go home my and feet. tell him about no, the guy? No, this is what happened. So when I went home, I, he was on the phone with another woman when I walked in the house, by the way. So I was already, like, even though I came home and kind of giddy or whatever, I was like, wow. So I just sat in the living room and I was just sitting to myself. And I was just like, here he is again on the phone with another woman because we say we don't want, that we're trying to, you know, take a break to see what's going on. So he literally came in the room. He was like, something is up with you. I could tell. He was like, I know you like the back of my hand. I was like, nothing is up. And he was like, yes, it is. You're talking to somebody, aren't you? And I was like, I'm not talking to anybody. And he was like, yes, you are. You could tell me. We're trying to be friends. Just tell me. I got me it. I friends. got it. I got it. Okay, I want to so... go on to, uh, you say he's verbally abusive mm -hmm. to you. And I want to talk about that and what he says and why you think he says it. When he does get very, very upset with me, he will call me the B word. <laughs> that's a lie. And he knows that I don't, that's I dislike that word, that's and I lie. feel like that's the reason why he uses it. How long would you stay with a partner who wasn't showing you affection? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. I discern from your compatibility test that you feel like you're missing out by being married. You got married too young and you and you don't like that state of being. Is that accurate? When I said that <clears throat> statement, that was two years ago. Uh -huh. that I felt like that. Right. And due to immaturity, I felt like that because I felt like, you know, I did get married at 19 years old. Right. I felt like I was missing out. And plus, the, the people I was allowing myself to hang around, you know, mm -hmm. they were just telling me things. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. cool, that sounds like a move, but right. I don't feel like that, you know. What do you more. feel like now? I take pride in being a family man and being pretty much a father to my kids. It's like, what am I missing out on now? I have the love of my life, supposedly, be, but um, Do you home, still want to remain in this relationship? I got the picture that you want to be friendly co-parents and you're done. That's, the f that's it, it. That's it. Now, it, it was, um, at the moment, I did feel like I wanted to make it work and get back with her. But and how do you of, feel right now? Right now, this moment? This moment. I don't want no difference. Just, you, you, you just I'm want done. to be good, good co-parents? I want us, and if it's possible, be good friends. But it's going to be up to her if she was willing to do that. Now, I want to talk to you momentarily about how he has spoken to you over the years. Do you believe that he is verbally abusive yeah. to you? What kind of things does he say to you? Um, when he does get very, very upset with me, he will call me um, the B word. <laughs> that's a lie. And he knows that I don't, that's I dislike that word, that's and I feel like that's the reason why he uses it that's against a lie. me. Oh, yeah, he, we all do. And he, Nobody when, likes that and word. And the incident just recently happened when I went to Memphis to clear my head. We were on the phone because, like, he says we want to be friends, and I mutually feel the same way. And he was like, what you down there doing, being a little hoe? Mm. And I never talked to him like that, even throughout right now when we're trying to be friends. I've never, ever talked to him like that or try to degrade him any kind of way. It's like that's all he continuously you know, tries to, to like do that? is degrade, degrade me. Are you tired of it? I'm definitely tired. He mm -hmm. says he's fed up, but it's more of because I said it first. If you were so tired, why are you currently saying just a few days ago, I want to make it work, I thought we were going to be able to make it work. And that's not true. Okay. This is what happened. The other day, he was on the phone with a, with a woman. Right. And we were trying to be cool and things like that. And I'm not going to lie, a little bit of the love came back. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I still was like, okay, I don't know because we do this so much. And I walked into his room and I laid on his bed with him and I was like, what you doing? No. He turns his phone around and he's on the phone with another woman on FaceTime. Particular, this particular woman that he's on the phone with, he's been on the phone with her since three days before, after we broke up. Three days after we broke up, he was already on the phone with another woman. Mm. And he had her name saved in his phone with a bunch of hard eye kissy face emojis. But says that they're not in a relationship. Okay. Are you in a relationship with another woman? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not in a relationship with another woman. Okay, okay, okay. Everything I say from here on 
is for your three-year-old son and your one-year-old daughter. Is it healthy for married couples to take breaks from each other? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I want you to be very clear about something, Mrs. Brown, because I think you're caught in a circumstance that a lot of women find themselves in. You know, the marriage is a hoopty on the road broken down. But every once in a while, it, it looks like it might start up again. So you're hoping that it's gonna be drivable. And I know that's how you feel because we always ask you, what do you want from me? And you said, I'm ready to go, but I want to hear what the judge says because if there is a bit of hope, I need to hear it from her. There is no hope. <laughs> and I want you to understand that y'all got married too young, you had children too young, he was too immature, you're too immature. What you need to do now is to be responsible and civil co-parents. That's where we are, and that's where I want you to be. I don't want you to keep looking for hope. I want you to be practical. Mr. Brown, on your part, what I w don't you float hope. Don't one day, you know, because she's gonna, she's gonna say one day when you're not feeling good about yourself or one day when you want some sex and you don't feel like working to get it off another woman, you're gonna call her and say, baby, maybe we can work it out. She'll come zipping over your house, go to bed with her. Then you guys get mad and you're gonna break up all over again. Don't float hope when there is none. Of course not. It's easy to do. And, and we can get hope from just about anything. You know, well, I remember and I miss you. Everything should be businesslike and cordial. You should wonder if she's all right, but you should be man enough not to destabilize the mother of your children with false hopes of reunion. Of course. You with <clears throat> me? We're clear. It's, 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 it's a hard thing for a lot of men to do, but that's what I want you to do. Now, Mrs. Brown, did you hear me when I said there's no hope? Yeah. You knew there was no hope when yeah, you I mean came here. But you just needed, you needed a push. Consider yourself shoved. And don't be sad. I'm not. Because you're beautiful. Very. And you're young. And you're intelligent. And the next dude you're gonna get, you're gonna vet him. You're gonna talk to him. You're gonna watch him. <laughs> you're not gonna get pregnant by him. Mm. You're, gonna, you're gonna use contraceptions when you have sex with until you're way married to somebody and you know they're gonna come up correct. You behaved like a little boy up to now. I hope you take on manhood from today forward. This matter is adjourned. I know I was emotional for you in there. Judge Lynn said, there's no hope. What's your reaction? We're just gonna try to talk only about our children, and that's it. Is he gonna be okay with that? Yeah, he should, because if I'm okay with it, he should, because I feel like I'm the one that's more um, upset about us breaking up. He doesn't really care as much as I do. I mean, she seems pretty beat up. I mean, she's hurt. You're not? Of course I'm hurt. I mean, I'm losing my family and my kids. They moved to a whole different state. Mm -hmm. Of course I'm hurt. I'm hurt, but I'm not gonna show it in, in front of everyone.